dough to keep us afloat, moving towards the future. You know what it is. We're here in the Mood Studio interviewing my main man, Jam. What's up? That is what it says on his birth certificate. <laughs> <laughs> it says Mr. Jam. It does. Without and, a doubt. Uh, we're here in the, again, ex super exclusive $2,000 an hour mood studio because we're big ballers over here. That's right. So tell us, Jam, how's your day going? I'm having a blissful day. It's very good. Uh, it was interesting finding parking to, to the mood studio, but I'm here now. <laughs> And it's good to be here. And uh, yeah, thank you for having me. I appreciate it, Luis. So. For sure, man. Yeah, there's all thank these you. college students that park around here, and I don't know why. It's not like we're near school or anything. Yeah, it's all good. <laughs> I, we figured it out. So, so uh, we were talking about your dad's pseudoscience slash spirituality <laughs> books. Yeah. Why does your dad have that collection? Is he like a Bogwan or something? No, or no. My dad just like. I think he just ended up with a bunch of, I mean, my, my mom's a lot more like into spirituality and stuff, but, um, he just, my family just had a bunch of like books, you know, that were lying around in, in high school. I got really into reading a lot and I just, I picked up uh, this book called the new earth by Eckhart Tolle and it mm -hmm. was like pretty, um, pretty, uh, transformational to say the least. So really, yeah, it's a really good book. What do you think was like one core aspect of that book that you took and really changed the way you thought about something? <clears throat> um, well, I think a lot of like, and I, I'm sure Ram Das would like, you know, vibe with this too. A lot of the, the teachings that like Eckhart talks about, um, it's really taking your concentration away from the mind and, and bringing it more like, into your um, into your being mm -hmm. and into your like body. So like um, like I think one of the practices in the book just talks about like um, like inner body awareness. So a lot of the times like our minds are so active and they're just like in a jumble and you're always thinking and doing something and it's like oh, I got to get to this interview or I got to go to job to my job or I got to go to school in the morning and you got you have all these you know a million things going in your head all the time. Um, but a big teaching that, uh, that Eckhart talks about is just like, um, you know, becoming aware of like how you feel right now mm -hmm. and like, you being know, in being in the now, but then also being aware of like your body. Like that's something that we're not tuned into a lot is like how we're feeling like right now. And so he just talks about like gaining awareness, like in your hands and like how your hands feel and then like taking that and bringing it into your arms and then into your like your chest and your feet and your legs and just your entire being. And then at that point, like you're taking your consciousness away from your thinking and you're bringing it more into your body and into the present moment. So mm -hmm. that was a big thing that uh, really helps me out. And that's just like a, a, like an easy meditation that you can do to kind of just like become more present and in the now. <laughs> no, yeah. yeah, especially for like a lot of people who have never even considered that. Like that yeah. can cause a huge mind shift. In oh yeah, that's really cool. Totally. Another good one. I don't know if it's from a new earth or from power of now. Yeah. But another good like one liner is like, um, think to yourself. I wonder what my next thought will be. Yeah, that's a good. And you're one. like, yeah. Wait. Or, I'm yeah. not thinking anything. Yeah. Yeah. He talks about uh, sometimes. I think I used to have this um, planner where I. You know, like every day it'd be like a different Eckhart Tolle quote. Mm. And uh, um, one of the ones was like, you know, be aware of like the next thought that arises. And it's almost like a, a cat watching a mouse. And it's like ready, like your, it's like your awareness getting ready to like pounce on the next thought. I don't yeah. know. So anyways, we're getting deep and philo philosophical. Indeed. It's time we should just start a meditation podcast. Hey, just I'm do down. Let's do it. I'm for sure. Yeah, let's, I'm game. New meditation playlist coming on the mood app soon. Yeah, <laughs> that should be a thing. That Dude. should totally be a thing. Oh, yeah. So right on. So what got you into playing music? Um, well, I was, uh, oh, man, that's a big question too. I don't know. I was always just inspired by, um, by music. My uncle on my mom's side uh, played a lot growing up and I, he was always like a big inspiration for me. And so um, yeah, I just really wanted to like pick up the guitar and get into playing. And then mm -hmm. in high school, I started playing uh, in different bands and um, then I just kept, kept going, you know, one chapter after the next. So mm -hmm. totally. Do you feel like those, like the spirituality readings that you've done and, you know, that kind of that type of thinking has influenced your music. Yeah. Like, do you absolutely. feel like you try to share that feeling with others and, yeah. and how do you try to do that? <clears throat> I mean, it's, uh, it's definitely something that like, you know, you, you write what you know. So it's like, mm -hmm. for me, you know, that's just, uh, 
uh, I think something that helped me out a lot uh, as a kid growing up and um, just trying to find some sense in this world. And, um, you know, a lot of those philosophies have definitely influenced my writing. And so, yeah, I would say they definitely have. So that's cool for sure. Um, would you ever be down to start a cult with me? <laughs> uh, man. Next question, next question. We can yes, talk about it absolutely. Yeah. Let's do it right now. I'll Let's it. start a cult. Though. I'll fund it. I got 20 bucks. I got 20 bucks and a lot of fruit punch. Let's do oh, it. Oh man. It's funny <laughs> that you say that because uh, have you ever heard of Wim Hof? Yeah. Okay. So uh, a friend of mine, I was trying to go to a Wim Hof class this weekend and, and she was just like not down to go. She's like, it's a total cult. And I'm like, <laughs> Uh, it's, I don't think it is at all. It's like taking cold showers and breathing. Yeah. I don't know. It's like everybody's entitled to their own perspectives and opinions. And uh, I had a friend of mine that uh, she she practiced like the Kuan Yin method, uh, which was like another form of like meditation. Okay. And um, she, a lot of the times they call that a cult. And it's mm -hmm. like, you know, well, these people are, it's a total cult. And I mean, granted, it's like, you know, it's just it, it, where everybody's trying to, everybody has their own spiritual path in right. life. And, you know, if that, if you connect to a certain spirituality and that, you know, helps you connect to the universe or God or, you know, life a little bit more, it's like, well, cool, you know? So mm -hmm. unless it's like Satanism or something that would probably be bad. <laughs> yeah, unless they're actually know, telling you, like, hey, know. drink it's this like, poison. <laughs> don't listen to everything I say because I don't know all the answers. So. <laughs> But uh, yeah, so anyways. That's funny, dude. I'm so down to go with to Wim Hof class. I've been doing <laughs> his, his breathing technique for like, I think a month now. It's yeah. like three three weeks, four weeks, and I love it. It's yeah. awesome. Like, do you do the cold showers yeah, too and everything? I've, I've taken a cold shower yeah. every day for like, yeah, like the, for like three weeks or something like that. And, and uh, are you on acid or not on acid while you do <laughs> No acid. I've never taken acid before. Okay. Uh, you but, take any drugs? You take Tylenol? No, I don't. Wait, actually, you don't take. Like, I don't take any. So I had. Uh, I even had like a. I had. A, I sliced off a chunk of my thumb a few months ago, and I had to go to the ER, and I was like, it was really painful, and I. I didn't take any like, Vicodin or Percocets, or I didn't take really? any drugs. No, man. It's like I think when you're. Uh, I'm vegan too, so mm -hmm. I just I have like a very like holistic lifestyle, Definitely. and so I just choose not to uh, to like take Tylenol or anything like that. Not to say that you can't, you can do whatever you want, whatever you have, whatever you have to do. I'm just right. saying, for me personally, I I try not to take anything. You know, yeah. Turmeric root is a good anti-inflammatory. Turmeric. So. Oh, dude, I got some turmeric right here. You trying to snort some? No, <laughs> <laughs> that would be extremely painful. We can rub it on our foreheads <laughs> to open our third eyes, dude. Turmeric is very good for your skin though. It is, definitely. Yeah. Make some good skin paste with it's that. It's very true. Well, so. you heard it here, kids. Don't do drugs unless you're rubbing turmeric all over your face. And uh, that's it. That's all we got. That's Mood Industries. We're endorsing no drugs, only turmeric. Turmeric <laughs> sponsorships coming soon. Yeah. Your man jam. <laughs> Any last right. shout outs? Um, I love you. Have a wonderful <laughs> day. Bye guys. Bye.